Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Stephen's in Harrington, Delaware, on this, the second Sunday of Epiphany. We will have our service in the bulletin uh, today or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please follow us along. And today is your annual meeting. Woohoo! So, I hope you have fun out there. Anyways, we'll begin Holy Eucharist right to. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. The reading this morning is from 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 10. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord, Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make those ears of anyone who hears it, of it, tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli 
that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 139. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journey and my resting places. You are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, the Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself create my inmost parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am mar marvelously made. Your, Your works are wonderful, wonderful and I know it well. My body is not hidden from you. While I am being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, you see behind my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were, they were fashioned day by day, day when you yet, yet they were known. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How, How great, great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count, to count them all, my life stand with me to be like, like yours. Epistle, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found, found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You know you've been coming to one place long enough is when I get in my car, I plug my car, my phone into the car, Apple CarPlay thing, and maps come up, and it leads me right here. <laughs> That's how long I've been coming here as your supply, which really is interesting. I mean, I remember the first email I got from this person called Heather Krause you know, asking me to sort of be supply for a Sunday. <laughs> and then that Sunday turned into, can you do these Sundays? And then can you do these Sundays? And so, what, two years later, can I do these Sundays? And so each week I have been here with the people of St. Stephen's. And this past year has been interesting, to say the least. It has been an interesting year for the parish, for the church, for all that we are and all that we do. We've had to suspend worship just when Lent was starting last year. And now we have gotten back into it. In the summer we had quite a few people coming. And then we had to suspend worship again as this pandemic has just kept on increasing. Now we have a light on the end of the tunnel, so to speak. We do have vaccines. I get mine here in a couple of weeks, I think. I'm over 65. <laughs> here we are. Where the, the, here we go. We got another one. Bingo. But over this time, being here at St. Stephen's and, and being only a supply priest, but I've come to this place and I really do enjoy being here. And I enjoy this path. And you are small. That's true. You're a small parish. But today's lessons, the Old Testament reading and the Gospel reading, show us that, you know, it's not from the ivory towers of academia or some grand cathedral somewhere that the Word of God sometimes gets heard. Matter of fact, I think in those places the Word of God gets stifled. Because people are so bent on the academic portion of God, the, the notion of God, that they don't feel God's presence. And here we have Samuel, a young boy, and he goes to bed. It's almost comical, isn't it? Here's Samuel, here's a voice as he's sleeping, and he gets up and goes, you call me to Eli, and Eli's going, go back to bed, kid. Stop bugging me. Eli says, I'm going to go back to bed. He gets back up. He hears the voice again. You call me. Eli says, no, I didn't. Go back to bed. You can almost hear the frustration. I remember when I was a kid, I'd have a nightmare, and I'd go right to my dad's side of the bed. 
And his, his, the way he dealt with it was simple. Since I was only a little kid, about four or five years old, he grabbed by the scruff of my neck, he yanked me up into the bed, slopped me down between my mother and my dad, and he'd go, go to sleep. <laughs> yes, Dad. And it came up, but you know, he was there. And when Samuel finally goes back to Eli, Eli perceives this something going on. From this child, God has spoken to him at a time when the word of God was rare. Samuel speaks to Eli. And now he has to tell Eli what God has said. And God has said some pretty tough stuff to Eli. That there was something wrong with what Eli and his sons were doing. And that they would be punished. Can you imagine a child having to say that to an adult? You're going to get punished because you haven't been doing what God has called you to do. And then we have Nathaniel. Nathaniel goes, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a backwater city and a backwater country at the edge of empire. It was poor, destitute, but yet, is where Jesus came from. Where Jesus grew up as a child, grew into adulthood, and from where he began his ministry. Can anything good come out of St. Stephen's and Harrington? Yes. In the work that the people here do. Before all this stuff hit the fan, so to speak, this last year, I saw some glimmers of some great things that these, you people have been doing. The pancake supper was an amazing event here. People coming from all over for pancakes on a Tuesday. They weren't going at IHOP. They were coming to I, I St. Stephen's. You were making progress. You were touching lives. It doesn't have to be huge, big ticket items. But in the small ministries that we do, that you do each and every day. I used to tell my congregation when I was a rector at Trinity Parish up in Melrose, hopefully nobody's watching me, <laughs> But I would tell them every year, because their annual meeting is coming up here in February, I would say to them that the annual meeting, this time in the parish's life is the most important time that you need to be part of. If you're not a part of the conversation, then you really don't have a place to say anything about stuff. When you complain, the annual meeting is your opportunity as a people of God to gather together. And it's going to be on Zoom this year. And I know Zoom is not perfect. And I know Zoom is kind of, for me, I know it's a pain. Especially when I go to the Bishop Zoom, which we have every Tuesday with all the clergy here. And I plug on there and they're all kind of doing this, you know. They're not quite there. But yet... It's an opportunity for us as clergy to talk to our talk to this bishop here. Because I'm not canonically resident here. <laughs> well, I did have something to say last Tuesday, but anyway, I forgot the point. I was kind of just asking questions about being a supply priest here at St. Stephen's during this past, past couple of weeks where we've seen so much going on in our country. Not being your rector not being canonically resident, not having ecclesiastical authority, but being a person, being a priest who is concerned and cares about you as a parish. A priest who loves you as a parish. And why I come every week, even though I'm only a supply priest, is because I believe this parish needs to have something. 
even this small offering that I give to you today and every Sunday. These, these, these words I preach up here, the prayers that we say, this is what's needed in today's world. We don't have to go out there and do big guy things. But just gathering together, preaching the word of God, praying the prayers, and gathering together, even on Zoom or Facebook or wherever we are, we are together. And our prayers bring us together and our lives together. So attend your Zoom annual meeting. Listen to one another. And know that God will be in your midst. And don't be surprised. Like Eli was. That the word of God will come from an unexpected person or place. And that a lot of good can and will come out of this church. A lot of good will can and come from this little place called Harrington. Now say it again, a word to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. We have spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our for families, families, friends, and, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. alone. <clears throat> for this community, the nation, and the world, we pray for those in the military Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Farrell. For all who work for, for justice, justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace. peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims, victims of, of hunger, hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. And oppression. <clears throat> we pray for, <coughs> for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. We pray for the following. John Macy, 
Bill Shaw, Shirley Bowden, Emma Fisher, Diana Matlock, Ava Marie Van Der Leen, Joe Kulowski, Gabby Bates, Bernie Falker, Kathy Russ, Kelsey Malloy, Regina Miller, Lexi Miles, Julia Wise, Paula Swift, and Teresha Schimmel. For long-term and restored health, Dale Matlock and Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Gretchen Fogus, Molly Wells, Mary Mills, and Joan Knott. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop, and Reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop, for Bruce Slovis, our priest, Brian Shepherd, senior warden, vestry group, Leticia, Barbara, Monique, Patricia, Alex, and Ralph, and the Diocesan Disciple of Prayer, Daughters of the King, and Anagachara Fellowship, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all, all who serve God, God in his church. church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And we ask your thanksgivings for the birthday of Margaret Kinney and Ralph Fletcher. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your, your name, name forever and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place and your eternal kingdom. Let your loving kindness be upon them. We put, we put their trust in you. you. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. And together, have mercy upon us, so merciful Father, and your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, to give you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Socially distant, all. Ascribe the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and coming to his court.
Great Thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the prayer book or in your leaflet today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Because of the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts. We give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love you may know to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate with the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ put for us. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon you today, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time for all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us out of the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessed God, Almighty the Father, and the Son, and the Holy 